Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials, as well as give a lot of baking business tips. I have got to have my Tim Hortons ice cap whenever I am doing something that is going to be a big, big, long project where I'm going to need to stay awake. Now, if any of you guys have ever made large amounts of cookies before, then you know that this is absolutely a labor of love. So after making three batches of my classic sugar cookie dough recipe the night before, it's fine finally time to start cutting things out. And right now I'm trying to decide which cutter do I want. Do I want the smaller one or the larger one? I decided to go with the slightly smaller one because I know my friend that I'm making this for said that she bought a bit smaller of bags, so I want to make sure that they fit. A lot of you guys ask me, how thick do you roll out your sugar cookie dough? And that's how thick I roll it out. Exact measurements are definitely not my strong suit. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting up a system. So after I have all of my baking pans prepared, I start cutting out the cookies and I do place these in the fridge. Now I must say this is a no spread recipe. It very, very rarely spreads on me, but because I'm doing something like perfect circles, I do put it in the fridge for that extra reassurance. And I do put that in my baking fridge, not my main fridge, just because my baking fridge can hold a lot more cookie trays at once. Whereas my other fridge is inundated with a whole bunch of other food. And 13 minutes is the magic number. Now I do have two ovens going at the same time. I also have the option of using the convection ovens, but I just find that it still doesn't give an even, even bake. So really the most I can do at a time is two pans if I want them evenly baked. After two hours of baking, finally I have baked approximately 145 cookies. I tend to overshoot just in case something goes wrong. I'm looking for a fairly smooth bake on the top and a slightly golden edge. I don't think that sugar cookies necessarily have to be perfect, perfect, but I am looking for shape because that is something that is going to show up. Whereas if there's a slight crease or an indent in your sugar cookie, that really isn't going to affect the taste that much at all, nor is it really going to affect your decoration. However, if the outline is incorrect or if it's spread, that is something that is going to show up in that final product. So I do make sure to kind of put the ones I don't want aside. Now moving along to making the royal icing recipe, and this is the recipe that I use over and over again. It's basically one cup of icing sugar to one tablespoon of meringue powder, and then add as much water as needed. Now in total, to cover about 135 cookies, I know I'm going to need about one to two kilograms of icing sugar, which means about 10 tablespoons of meringue powder. Now this is the part of the cookieing process that I really make sure to take my time with. The reason is if you get the wrong consistency, if it's too thick or if it's too thin, you're gonna fight with decorating your cookies for a long time. So it's better to just get it right the first time around and then that way you're gonna have an easy decorating process as you go. And I do place my whisk attachment in that bag so that if I do need to re-whip or make more icing, I don't have to continually wash it because this royal icing will dry up quickly. So I am always looking to increase efficiency, of course. So I did try a dipping method first, and I have showed you guys my dipping method on this channel before, and it turns out okay, but it's still not the same as that nice sharp edge. And these are going to be for wedding favors, so I wanna make sure that they're absolutely perfect. I find the dipping method works better if you're doing some sort of marbling technique because it's more of an abstract look, whereas this is more of a clean and tight look, so I decided that I couldn't dip these, I did have to pipe and flood. So when you are using proper pipe and flood consistency, you're not going to get any running off of the cookie whatsoever, and you're going to get that nice edge that you're looking for. Now normally I don't run into any piping bag issues whatsoever, but I decided to try these other piping bags and unfortunately it exploded on me. I think I put too much pressure on them and I was going really fast. So yeah, that didn't work out so well. Now one mistake like that can actually cost you about 10 minutes because you got to clean everything up and then you've got to reset everything. But after a few hours, I did eventually finish piping and flooding all of those cookies. And I also use the dehydrator trick just to kind of speed things along a little bit more. This is the first time I'm actually showing the projector in one of my videos, but it basically works like most projectors work. You plug in any device and then you can have that image show up on your cookie. 
I don't really recommend my setup at all and I don't really recommend this projector. It's not that it doesn't work, it just can be a little bit finicky with all of the cords and everything. So when I find a projector and a system that I really, really like, I will share it with you guys. Now I used to do things like this completely freehanded and of course that means that not all cookies are going to look uniform and sometimes I still will just do things freehanded. It's a lot easier for me than whipping out my whole system that I'm not really that happy with. But when I'm doing something like wedding favors where it does need to look uniform and it will be obvious if they're not all the same, I will use my projector. Now I tried this in two different ways. First, I tried just kind of outlining the G and then filling it in right away, but I didn't really like the lines. I thought they looked a little bit shaky. So I switched it up and I decided to do one full tray of just outlines and then go back and fill it in because by the time you're done outlining the last cookie, the first outline is pretty much dry and it's ready to be filled in. I'm using two different consistencies here. So I'm using a stronger piping consistency for the outside of the G and then I'm using a filling consistency. And this filling consistency is also just slightly thicker than what we used for the pipe and flood. Now at this point I could have stopped. My friend wanted something very, very simple. She said that she was fine with just the pipe and flood and then the G on top, but I felt like it needed a border. And at first I tried with white fondant thinking that that would go faster, but in the end it actually was taking me way too long, so I decided to abandon that idea because adding something like a border means that you're adding approximately 30 seconds per cookie, and that's if you're going fairly fast as well. So 30 seconds multiplied by 135 cookies, you're really adding on quite a bit of time, so I decided I needed to do something way more expedient, and this was the most expedient thing I could think of. I also thought it just kind of made the design a little bit more neat and tidy. Whenever I'm making large cookie orders like this, it really is a family effort. So I really try not to take on too many of these because it is a lot, a lot of space that gets taken up. I find that's the hardest thing about making this many cookies. So as I'm doing this in order to save time, my husband is actually shuffling around all of the cookies for me so I don't have to get up from my spot and walk around and try to get things. It really is about setting up the most efficient way possible. Now these are the extra cookies that I felt like, okay, I'm just going to make extra just in case because these are going to be traveling on a ferry boat and I don't want anything to happen. So just in case for my friend specifically, I'm going to make a few extra. So I believe I ended up making like 10 extra. These cookies were definitely a labor of love. I would probably do something like this again for a friend, but I think I can safely say that I would never ever make orders like this for the public again. It's just a lot of pressure. It's a lot of work. Hats off to you if you guys do this on a continual basis because I know that this is something that I have to do far and few between, but how beautiful does it look once you're all done? But of course, once you're all done, that's not the end of it. It does have to get packed away. Now, my friend actually brought me these boxes, but they were for cake, so they could only fit like six cookies in at a time. Yeah, those boxes right there. Now, that being said, of course, you can stack them, but I never like to stack the cookies until about 24 hours afterwards just to be on the safe side so I decided to lay them all flat out for her. Congratulations to my friend Melissa on her beautiful wedding and everything made it intact including the cake that I will show you next week. So let's get into the pricing of these cookies. I know I haven't talked about pricing in a really long time it feels. The average cookie price in Canada for a bakery style cookie like this, not even custom, would be about $3 to $4 each. So for a custom order, this would run about $742.50 Canadian. This is based on 135 cookies. Now let's get into the subscriber submission of the day. So this is a cake that was sent to me by one of my lovely subscribers. Has a lot of different things going on. From what I can see, I see a lot of sugar work. I also see some buttercream work and fondant and gum paste. So go and check them out, drop them a like, and drop them a comment. And if you want one of your submissions featured on my channel, then please go follow me at SD Bake Shop on Instagram, where you can either tag me in a photo or send me a photo, and it could be featured next on this channel. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!